we have arrived at Vicina. This is where we lost track of Pignot. Vicina, huh? Just great. There's nothing here but snow and ice. Uh-huh. But after they built the Climate Control Center, the planet became inhabitable. This is a crisis, team. From the look of things, the climate control generators, well, looks like it's been out of order for quite a while. If this blizzard keeps up, the planet will once again become barren. I wonder if this is Pigma's work. Could he be laying a trap? Oh, we can't fly our R wings in this weather. We have no choice. I'll go down and get the generator back up. If I can just get to the climate control center, we'll be okay. Playing the hero again, huh, Foxy? Hey, more power to you, buddy. Me? I hate the cold. <sighs> it makes me hibernate! It's up to you, Fox. I'll make sure the others are ready to launch their R-Wings at any time. Hello everybody, I'm Me Brother 9 and welcome back to Star Fox Assault. In the last episode, we took down Star Wolf, obliterated them, and left them in the middle of space with no wolfins. In this episode, we're going to a cold planet. Should be fun. Rob, scan the control center. Affirmative. The climate control center is protected by a shield. Hmm. Alright. So to get in, we have to turn that shield off first. Yeah, I guess you're right. No time for subtlety. I'm gonna have to blow up the generators. Don't go overboard, Fox. It's under control. Then get going and do it! We're just spinning our wheels here! Careful what you wish for, Falco. Alright, so starting off this mission, you notice we can get a Landmaster. I'm not gonna grab that just yet. If you come over here to this the weird gray tower thing that's important in no way whatsoever, you'll so notice there's an Fox. s flag right here, down at the bottom. So yeah, we're only like five, six seconds into this mission, and we already got our first s flag. What a way to start. So it's actually very good to get into this Landmaster after you've done that, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of ground to cover, and there's a lot of enemies and they're really spread out. It, there, there are a lot of enemies in this level. It's actually really easy to get a really high combo and build up everything that's going on there. It's it's no feat to actually say that you can get like 100 on your combo easy in this level several different times because there are just so many enemies. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking down this these three generators that are around the area so we can actually get into that climate control center because it's got a barrier going around. And we already took out the first one. If you come right here, you'll notice that there's actually another S flag, S flag number two. So we've got two. There's going to be four before we actually take down the generator, and then there's going to be one more after we take down this giant barrier right here. There's there's three generators. There's one on the east side, there's one on the west side, and there's one in the north. We're going to be taking care of them in a clockwise fashion, starting with the was this the west one? Yes, west. I know directions. Don't question me. I'm gonna try and get around these. Oh no, okay, well I fell. It's okay, you can take either way. There's actually enemies all over the place. I'm kind of being a scrub right now, which is a little disappointing, but there are a lot of turrets around this area, so it's really easy to build up your combos, which I'll say probably a thousand times in this episode. Don't don't be surprised if I really do that. I, I'm gonna look at my map a lot of the times, mainly because it's easier to see where the levels are and where everything is when I press start to look at my map. It's just, it's it's a lot easier to see where everything is rather than focusing on that tiny little map down there because it really doesn't show anything except for where some enemies are, which is which is good if you're trying to build up your combo, but I'm not too worried about that. I know I am going for the S flags, but I'm mainly trying to, uh, not the S flags, the silver emblem, but I'm mainly trying to make sure I get all the S flags and keep my party members safe in the initial run throughs of these. I, I'm more about, I'm more like to worry about the silver emblem when I'm going through the missions on my own just because it's hard to get them when you're trying to commentate. And because you tend to forget what you're doing because you're trying to focus on words and then you lose combos like I just did there. There are two other S flags we have to grab and they're actually both next to this last target over here. I prefer to go above because there's a lot of enemies and turrets that'll be making problems for you if you're down on the low part. They'll be shooting at you from all sorts of different places and it's really just a bad day. So I prefer to go on this top part and hopefully this roly-poly will actually attack me. 
I know, I know that's kind of weird to say that I want the roly-poly to attack me, but I can't really shoot him if he's just spitting out all those green missiles. And we want to take him out so we can actually grab this S flag right here. It's our third one, and there should be... There should be... There's just one more, and it's actually right next to this generator over here. There are a lot of roly-polies in this level. They seem to kind of throw them all over the place. I'm going to say right now that this is my least favorite level in this entire game. They throw a ton of roly-polies in there. There's a bunch of enemies, but they're all spread out, so it's it's easy to build up your combos, but you have to go far away from where the actual mission objectives are, so it's not like you can go through each mission, through, through, through the mission like a normal person and build up your combos super easy. You kind of have to go out of your way to get some of them. And these roly-polies, as I've said before, my least favorite enemy, and there's there's a good like eight or ten of them throughout this entire level that cause a lot of problems but after you take out this uh, the climate control center's barrier come over here to this nice little area you'll get our last s flag in this outer part there will be one more it's actually over by the climate control center i'm going to want to head to the west side i'm pretty sure i'm on the east side right now yeah i'm on the east side so i gotta head over to this west side because that's where our last s flag in this mission is going to be and while we have all the while we already have all the S flags, we are nowhere near to being done with this mission. There's a lot of stuff left in this mission. And our, our last S flag is on top of the climate control center up here. You have to actually take out the barrier because the barrier is like literally right outside of it when you go in. But you can grab this health pack, it's very convenient, and we're gonna come in here and we're gonna turn off the climate control center. This should be it. Control settings confirmed. Begin any adjustments. Woohoo! That's the end of the blizzard! You did it, Fox! Fox? What's wrong, Fox? Come in! Quit yelling, Falco. I'm fine. Just a little hitch in the plan. There must have been an ID problem. The sentry bots have taken a liking to me. That must have been pigless work. Uh, I'm on my way. Hold on! Yeah. Could you hurry? Why is it that whenever there are any kind of sentry bots in any game whatsoever, that they always turn on the people that they're not supposed to be turning on? It always happens, no matter what. Well, anyways, these enemies are can't actually be harmed if you just shoot them regularly like I'm doing right here. What you need to do is you need to get close to them, they'll back up, do a jump attack, and then you can take them out. They're really not that hard, you just kind of got to do a little bit of waiting to actually take them out. All we're going to be doing right now is we're going to be chilling, because you'll see that there's a barrier right here, so we can't get out of this area right now. So there's really nothing to do but wait for Falco to get here now that the climate control center has been... I think. I think it's turned on. I think we're turned on. They kind of mentioned that if it's on, that the planet will be inhabitable, but I'm pretty sure they mean that if it's not turned on the right way, that the planet will become inhabitable. And that's an interesting thing to note. Uh, Fachina here was in Star Fox 64, but they actually called it Fortuna, which was the first planet that we started off on. It was actually a mistake in translation. And it was fixed in the Star Fox uh, 64 3D version, and holy crap, I am getting absolutely bodied by all these enemies here. Eat this, scumbags! Falco! Wow, that was a flashy entrance. Quit complaining and climb aboard, will you? All right. Hey, just do me a favor and try not to fall off. Hey, just worry about not getting shot down, okay? Not a problem. Hey, Sure Shot, get out your blaster and take care of our admirers, will you? So, I mentioned in the last episode that the You're rail right now, shooter parts of up. this game are my least favorite. It was kind of a bit of a fib. Because these parts where you're a rail shooter but you're not in an R-wing are not 
part of what I say is my least favorite. I just don't like the R-Wing rail shooter sections. I actually really like these sections where you're on the R-Wing, but you're not in the R-Wing. I just, I, I don't know, I think, it's, I think it's really cool because it's like you're chilling here on this R-Wing. You're not really doing much other than shooting these enemies. And I remember with my friends, whenever we were playing the multiplayer, we would always try to actually uh, do this. We'd try to get onto the R-Wings and then go around shooting everything. And it's a lot harder than it actually seems and what they make it out to be here in this mission. And you saw that, like, Falco in that cutscene did, like, the super sharp turn where Fox definitely would have fallen off because he was at, like, 90 degrees. There's no way he would have stayed on, but that's whatever. What we're mainly going to be doing is we're just going to be chilling here on this R-Wing, flying around, taking out all these different enemies. You'll notice there are these kind of orange enemies on the map those are the ones that you really got to watch out for because they they'll lock on to whoever's driving so in this case falco and after after they've locked on they'll do the super powerful charge beam kind of thing but well, usually falco will tell you that someone's locked onto them on the ground and you can also see them as orange dots on your little radar so they're not too much of a problem it's really easy to build up your combos in the second look we're we're on an R wing. We're not. We're still on foot, and Slippy still needs help from us because he's just that much of an incompetent toad. I'm actually gonna chill here and wait because, as I said, it's really easy to build up your combos in this section. And as you can see, I already have 106 combos, so I won't even get any more combo bonuses if I go past to like 110. At least I don't think I will. I'm kind of curious if I will. I don't think that you get any combo bonuses past 110. Or a uh, hundred, so you don't get them at 110. So I'm gonna wait for my combo to die out, so I can build up another combo, maybe. And yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there we go. We, I, we might be hit by some of them. I'm not entirely sure. It kind of seemed like there were a lot of them that got their shots off, but none of them are actually doing anything. So I think we're safe, maybe. Yeah, look at that. I, I was totally sure that we were very boned right there, very screwed, because a lot of them were showing their little laser things but they didn't actually get off even though they kind of showed that they were getting shot out but whatever whatever i will take it me not failing this mission is always a good thing and now we have these uh, other kinds of enemies we're gonna have these missiles shot at us that will always show behind and then there will be these kind of stronger enemies that really just take like maybe twice the amount of shots they're not that much of a problem this mission's actually super easy and one thing i do like about this mission even though I did say it's my least favorite mission in the game the good thing about it is it's a very dynamic mission you know you start off in a landmaster then you do some on foot stuff maybe you did some on foot stuff instead of going on the landmaster and then you go on to this wing right here to do this rail shooter with Fox and there is actually gonna be we're right now we're waiting for Peppy to send us our own R wing which it's apparently finished so we're gonna grab our own R wing and do an R wing section that's the one thing I like about the stage, it's very dynamic. Fox, those bots seem suspicious, so I checked them out, and they were Aperoids! Are you sure? Yeah, Aperoids must be able to take over other machines! Are you serious? That is true! And the one who's pulling the strings is me, Pigma! <laughs> Pigma! Up the ladder, big fella! What the? That's part of the engineering, isn't it? It's been infected by the Aperoids! You dirty swan! <laughs> I wouldn't bother with me right now! That thing looks like it means business! <laughs> danger, danger, climate control center generator approaching critical overload. Deal with Pigma later. Without the climate control center, we'll never stop the blizzards again! Got it. <laughs> <laughs> all right so now we have our r wing we can do this free flying mission and we have our official boss of this level we're going to take out all these enemies you'll notice that they don't actually count as enemies towards your hit combo which is a little bit of disappointment because if they did man would it be easy to build up your hit combo so many of these enemies come out but what you do want to take them out for is they actually drop bombs and they drop a lot of bombs. See, look at that. I already have, was this, three bombs now? And I've only taken out just a couple of these enemies. They drop bombs like none other. And you want bombs because this big generator, generator, this big enemy, this boss bro right here, 
he's kind of a problem because you can't shoot him with your regular lasers to actually get anything. You have to shoot him with your bombs for him to actually take damage. I think it takes three because it seems like that they do, each bomb does a third of his health. And if you use your, uh, what is it, your stabilizers? Your sta I don't know. I don't know. The things that make you slow down, whatever those, the brakes, brakes, yeah, that's what it's called. If you use your brakes, you'll slow down and actually make it really, really easy to use your bombs. And as long as he gets hit by the hitbox, you don't even have to get it straight through like the Death Star kind of thing. We did it. This is Fox. The climate control center generator is undamaged. Looks like all the aparoids are gone too. Nicely done, Fox. Still, getting attacked by your allies? Man, that's just crazy. Machines are machines, after all. Those without strong wills can be easily turned to evil. Those without strong wills. Allies or enemies. What is it, Fox? Nothing. That sounds like someone I know, that's all. Obey us, obey us, obey us, obey. <laughs> was, I, was I just talking to my sleep? No, I won't turn a profit by obeying them. I, I, I... All ships home safely. The climate control center still working. Nice job. All right. So it looks like I didn't even come close to the badge score. I kind of expected that this. This mission is really hard to get a really high badge score while you're doing it. I'm going to go back through, I'm going to grab this badge score real quick, you'll see in the end slate. If you want to get the bronze badge score, it's really easy, it's only 600. If you want to get the gold badge score, it's actually really hard, there's 3,900 hits that you have to get for the gold badge score, it's ridiculously high. Even though I don't really like this level as a whole, I think it's really cool eh, eh, how dynamic it is. And I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope I'll see you back for the next one. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thanks for watching.